Huh? What do you mean? No, we can't start. I'm not. I'm still eating a peat. All right. Hey, y'all. Instinct Survivalist here with another Two Tip Tuesday. This time we'll be talking about canvas needles and toggles. First things first, I want to thank again Survival Sherpa for piling in with me on the last Two Tip Tuesday. What fun it was, not just working with a, with somebody of his mindset uh, and his skill level, but also just the funness we had. I mean, we had fun before, we had fun during, and we had after. Uh, great time with the Sherpa. Todd's a great guy. Uh, if you ever get the chance to meet him and get to know him, thumbs up. Definitely A-OK -okay in my book. So let's talk about the canvas needle first. Canvas needle, why do we need this? And you know, what are the purposes of it? So in the in my kit we always talk about um, or we do talk about I don't want to say always but we do talk about the fact that we do not want a unitasker we want something that's available for multiple tasks and one of the things recommended by Dave Canterbury and the five C's ten C's uh, all the different C's if you will is a canvas needle and the first time I heard that I'm like I don't need a needle um, but you know trying to learn stuff I wanted to add one to my kit and see when and where I would need these things so guess what this past weekend I made a poplar bark basket uh, or container and I used it for threading the needle through the through the bark now in some of these I actually punched the hole with the needle um, the other side is because I was out with with the Sherpa uh, I was able to borrow his all that was forged by a gentleman by the name of James Gibson great guy uh, as well so that was very helpful is being able to go in and sew into this now the other side of this it's a canvas needle so it's really designed for field repair right being able to go out and repair your gear whether it's a backpack uh, whether it's a haversack whether it is a tarp whether it is your clothing uh, I have seen quite a bit uh, was very surprised at that and I actually saw one guy where he took and ran it through the sole of his his boot because the sole had actually separated uh, he had worn them out so much and that was one of the things he did is he sewed he sewed the uh the sole back onto uh, the leather uh, which allowed him to get from point a to point b so that he could go get him some more boots but uh, he'd worn them out that was one of the the benefits so sewing field repair third one is first aid all right being able to go in and, and flake out a, a stinger or a splinter or a fill in the blank. Uh, also being able to hold, hold open a flap of skin that allows you to go in and then irrigate what's there. So being able to wash that out. Uh, and then the last one, and this is one of those where I do not recommend it unless you have been trained on how to do it. And that's actually to go in, sorry for wiping, I'm, I'm, it is hot out here. Um, one of the things that I, I, I don't necessarily recommend you do it unless you've been field trained is actually going in and, and doing stitches. So yes, this provides a huge hole, but in a pinch and if you know what you're doing, then you could use this for stitching up your skin, pulling two flaps of skin together. And the reason I don't recommend it for somebody that's not trained is if you're sealing up a wound and you're bleeding still inside, the bleeding has not been contained, then you take the, the bleeding and it's bleeding under the skin and inside the skin. So you then cause an internal bleed. Also, if you have something else that was bleeding, so if you punctured uh, something in your gut, uh, some other organ or something of that nature, maybe a vein, maybe an artery, um, those types of things may still be bleeding and you could be bleeding out inside your skin. So I don't recommend doing stitches. However, if you have been trained and you know what you're doing and you don't have any other options, uh, then certainly you could do that. Again, there's my disclaimer. Don't do it unless you know what you're doing. Fair enough, plain and simple, there we go. All right, now toggles. What do they have in common with a canvas needle? Well, the main thing is both of them use cordage. So the canvas needle, right? We're using cordage to build out the, the bark basket, using cordage for field repair. But we're gonna use two toggles or two different styles of toggles to improve things in our camp, okay? Now I use these quite often because it's something and you can see the ends were just snapped off, something that you can do in-field in field repair uh, or in-field use, I should say, uh, and quickly and easily set up something to make your life more easy, 
Okay. So we not we don't remember we always talk about not just going out and camping or not just going out and and being in the bush, but it takes it one step further of hey we're not just we're not roughing it right we're not roughing it at all we're trying to smooth it and these are some items that can help you smooth it and there's a lot of people that talk about them so I want to go ahead and talk about them as well um, not just to get on the bandwagon but to show you how I use them in three different ways fair enough. What we're going to do is we're going to reposition the camera. We're going to go over to the camping area uh, or the campsite, if you will, and uh, show you some examples uh, of three ways to utilize a toggle. Okay, so you can see on this one where I've actually beaver chewed the center of it, and this could be coming down from a tripod or something like that. And the reason you beaver chew one or why you would cut some in the center is simply so that the knot will not slide. Now, with weight distrib distribution and maybe a pot sliding from one side to the other, making sure that you've got it right, or I'll show you when I do my bag, um, I want to make sure that this is not going to come and start sliding this way and knock everything to the ground. So with this... We'll take and we'll run the bush pot all the way through, all the way through. Guys, it's real simple. And then let it hang. Now that benefit allows us to go in and uh, drop it close to the fire from there, raise it up if we need to, what have you. But it does allow us another way or another method to hang and cook over a fire. So that's your best benefit as far as that goes. Now, the other side is being able to go in and use it for a tarp. And so let's actually drill down into the tarp or look at the tarp uh, toggles. So in this one, you can see I don't have it beaver chewed, but what I'm using is my ridge line and a loop that's in my ridge line for the way I made my knot. The other side, is going to use a prussic knot. So while I've gone in, I can take and push this through there push my cord through pull my other toggle go from there and then move my prussic knot to tighten this up now why would I do that if I look at the ability to go in and tighten that up and why would I use a prussic knot is because now under tension this is not going to slide so that quickly that easily I'm able to go in and set up that entire tarp on that ridge line now, for those of you that really want to know how to tie a prussic knot, I'm going to do a quick extra lesson, if you will. Make sure I got this in frame. All right, so all I've done is I take a piece of cordage and I tie a knot in it. No big deal, no fuss, no muss. Take this, run it to the inside, run it to the inside again, and then pull. Now what I do is I make sure that all this is sitting to the outside. When I tighten that down, there is my prussic knot. And so now, if this is under tension, I'm sitting there pulling on it. And if I were to tighten this down a little bit more, you would see there's not as much slippage as what that was. But that's the other side of this, is making sure that you have uh, knots that don't slip. And I, you can see I'm pulling the crap out of that thing and it's not slipping at all. At least I hope that's what you're seeing. All right, so there's that one. Now, the last one is actually what I use on my, on my bag. And so let's actually go to that. And again, as I mentioned earlier, I do beaver chew it. And the reason being is because I wanna make sure, let's get this up a little bit. Okay. The reason I do beaver chew it is so that it won't slip. And with me having a, having a bag, uh, it doesn't matter how much it weighs or what have you, I can take and run that over, back through just like you do a square knot. And then I'll take and run it the other way uh, and it becomes a hitch. Um, don't ask me the name of the hitch because I don't know. And then what you do is you make sure you put a stop knot at the end of that. And what happens is, is now I can put a little weight on that and then I can put my bag on that. So now if we look at it overall, I've got my bag 
sitting there and it because it's number one because it's wide enough and that's the other side of this is making sure it's wide enough because it's wide enough i don't have to worry about it falling off and then secondly because i did the beaver chew i don't have to worry about it sliding either i don't have to worry about the toggle slipping and going this way and then sliding out from in the rope so there you go that's the reason why we utilize a canvas needle and the benefits of toggles something that you can make in the field easy to use and very very helpful hey Thanks for all you do. Thanks for all your likes, your subscribes. And if you haven't subscribed, click on the icon below and you can definitely subscribe. Don't forget to watch the rest of the Two Tip Tuesdays up here in the upper corner. Um, and then, uh, hey, keep sharing out the stuff, guys. Thanks for doing everything you do. Thanks for watching, sharing out the information. And until then, use your instincts to survive. Thanks for watching.